We come today to acknowledge Christ as King. His throne is a cross and he reigns from high heaven. <clears throat> Beauty and holiness are the marks of his kingdom. He is the face of God revealed in human form. Let us keep our eyes fixed on him. King Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Let us pray. God of gods, King of kings, be with us as we seek to know more of your truth. Speak to us by your word and your spirit. Help us to see Jesus and to hear his voice, not just for today, but for all days and for the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus we pray. Amen. I do welcome you all, brothers and sisters, so that um, we are together as we hear the word of God. Now I will call my brother Ben to come and do the reading of the word of God from John chapter 18, verses 33 to 37. So listen very, very carefully. God bless you. Good morning and praise God for this week and for all the blessings God pours out on our lives. Uh, another blessing he's about to pour out is this scripture verse. So as Johnson mentioned, it's from John 18, 33 to 37. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and come into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Praise God. This is the word of the Lord. And uh, look forward to Johnson's message this week on this scripture verse. So we'll get him back and... Um, Bring open ears. God bless. Uh, this, this morning I've decided to share with you on the theme, Christ the King of Kings. Christ the King of Kings. You know, church junkies know that on the ecclesiastical calendar, this marks the last Sunday of the liturgical year. So the liturgical year is of course different from the calendar year. This liturgical year begins with Advent and the time we set aside for reflection about the coming of Christ at Christmas. Advent is followed by Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter and Pentecost. Some churches intersperse periodically what is designated as ordinary time. Those times we remember the work of God in the life and the ministry of Jesus part from special times of celebration. So we travel from the Lord's miraculous birth to his death and resurrection with all the appropriate stops in between and even beyond culminate the journey with our most best affirmation of faith. Jesus Christ is Lord. So Christ the King Sunday is also known in some churches as the reign of Christ Sunday. Either way, something very powerful is being said. King, kingdom, Reign. They are all highly charged political ways. They say something about power. So who is it? Conversely, who does not? Is Christ the King Sunday a day to celebrate Christ as the King of Kings and Lords of Lords? So Christ is Lord of the earth. The Bible opens with these ways. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible ends by saying, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the dwelling place of God is with the people. So the psalmist says, the earth is the Lord's sea and everything that is in it. So here in Revelation we discover that God not only made the place, he put Jesus in charge of running the place. So Christ is the ruler of the kings of the earth. He is the ruler of the kings of the earth. So when 
Jesus was brought before Pilate in the kangaroo court which sentenced him to death. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Did you come up with that on your own or have others been talking with you? I, I like that statement. Is that your own thinking? Or others have been telling you about me? Then Jesus said this, I am not of the kind of king you think of I am. If so, my followers would be fighting for my release. So while people are shuffling for power, prestige, and wealth, Jesus reigns. While we are doing all the things that we are doing on the earth, fighting, doing all these things, the only thing you should know is that Jesus is in control. He's the one who reigns. Maybe Christ and Christ alone can turn the ties of terrorism, fear, poverty, and disease, COVID-19, that plague our world. And it brought so much fear in the people today. Christ is king. He is the truth. If Christ is king, we don't need to be. He is the king. We don't need to run the world. We need to bow in adoration to the one who does. So at the present moment, you find that people try to run the world. But he is the one who is in charge because he's the king of kings. So Pilate understood that. He asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? This is not a casual question. Although Pilate seems to be asking it deceitfully. In fact, this word king is repeated nine times during this encounter between Pilate, Jesus, and the Jewish leader. It has been asked nine times. So Jesus' response is interesting. Instead of a direct answer, he comes back with another question. Is that your own idea? Or did others talk to you about me? <laughs> Sounds almost smart, at least bold, considering his situation. So the Jewish leaders had brought him to Pilate after their illegal midnight trial. They made it perfectly clear that the expectation was that Pilate will condemn Jesus to death. So one of would think that flippant replies might not be the best idea. But that is what Jesus did. Jesus had appealed to the head of this man, Pilate. So Jesus was dealing with Pilate. He asked him the logical question of where he got his evidence. Where did you get this to say, are you king of the Jews? Where did you get this? Or some people told you. So Pilate smeared at that and said the Jews had brought accusation to him. Now Jesus will appeal to this man's heart. Jesus is dealing with him. Man to man, he's dealing with Pilate. Pilate, of course, is equally flippant in response. Am I a Jew? Am I a Jew? The implication being that even an idiot would never make that mistake of bringing you so that we can judge you for death sentence. In, in fact, that attitude was characteristic of Pilate's administration in Judea. So in his arrogance, he never denied to identify with the people in his church, and the result was an ill-tempered, mean spirit regime that would have long been released, relegated to the dustbin of history. His name would quickly have been forgotten, except for one memorable and ever-shaking incident. He, a pilot, was dumbfounded. He couldn't believe there was someone claiming to be the king of the Jews and that they would have the audacity to bring such a charge. Pilate is out on a limb and wants to get off. He would like to help Jesus. He is inside the court, alone with Jesus. There are only two, <laughs> alone with Jesus. The Jews are waiting outside because of their scruples about contaminating themselves. And here, Pilate would be happy if Jesus would simply say, he is not a king, and that would get Pilate off the hook. So look here, who is on trial, Pilate or Jesus? <laughs> who is on trial here? Is it Pilate or is Jesus? Because if you look at what is being, uh, being asked now, it looks like now Pilate is the one on trial. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? On verse 35, Jesus responds, but not with anything that would answer Pilate's question. My kingdom is not of this world. 
My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place, making it worse for Pilate to understand. What is he talking about? Pilate is too confused. You are a king then. You are right in saying that I am a king. <laughs> On verse 37, says Jesus. But would you have to add, but like no other king this world has ever seen, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight for me that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Verse 36. We are drawn back to the Christian year that culminates with the celebration of Christ as king. Christ is not just, is not Jesus' same name. It is a title. It indicates the anointed one, someone set apart for God's service. In the Old Testament, the title was only regularly given to the king. And by the time of Jesus, the Jewish people were looking for a messiah. A Christ to come would lead them into victory against their oppressors. A conquering hero would overthrow the hated Romans. It soon became evident this was not God's intention in Jesus. For those who had their hopes pinned on the military messiah, this was a devastating blow. Indeed, some have speculated that this was Judah's problem. Once he found out that his dream of conquest was over, he bolted ranks. And the rest of the story we know too well. But we know the story does not end sadly. That is why we culminate the Christian year with Christ as the King Sunday. So this is the day that we rob the rafters of the universe with the declaration that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Lord of the universe. So Lord to the ancients it meant master or owner and was always a title that consummate respect. In the modern world, to call Jesus Lord is to say he is the chief, he is the boss, he is the main man, the head of all. His decisions are final, alpha and omega. You can't say it after he has said. So Jesus Christ is Lord. The four words were the first creed that the Christian church ever had. To be a Christian then and to be a Christian now is to make that affirmation. If you are a Christian, you are making the affirmation that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He is the Lord of what? Of your life. So for me, Jesus Christ is Lord. That person is a Christian. The moment you say, if someone says, for me, Jesus Christ is Lord, that person is a Christian. Just by saying those words, to, just to say, for me, Jesus Christ is Lord, you are a Christian. Because you are affirming that he is the one leading you. If we say that Jesus Christ is Lord, it means that for us, Jesus Christ is uniquely in charge. We are prepared to obediently follow in whatever direction the Lord chooses to lead. Even if he goes where we might rather, he did not. So it was, if we say Jesus Christ is Lord, it means his priorities become our priorities. We will be drawn to those on the margins, the outcasts, even those society, even sometimes even the church suggests we stay away from. Because Christ was always with the marginalized, the poor. So we are drawn towards the poor. Those were the priorities of Jesus Christ. The justice, the injustice which is happening in the society, we will be drawn to it. If we say Jesus Christ is Lord, we will take Christianity seriously. We will worship, we will fellowship, we will pray, we will even sacrifice just as Jesus did. We will never let Christianity become an end in itself. It must never get in the way of people. If we say Jesus Christ is Lord, it means we are prepared to give Jesus a love and a loyalty that will be given to no other person in the universe. Because he's Lord of your life. An anonymous author made this striking comparison. He said Socrates taught for 40 years. Plato taught for 50 years, Aristotle for 40 years, and Jesus only for three years. Yet the influence of Christ's three-year ministry infinitely transcends the impact left by the combined 130 years of teaching from these men who were among the greatest philosophers of all antiquity. 
if you try to think about it. So Jesus painted no pictures. Yet some of the finest paintings of Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci received their inspiration from him. Jesus wrote no poetry, but the world's greatest poets were inspired by him. Millions upon millions of words have been written and spoken about, about Jesus. Let us be content then with our most best aff affirmation of faith. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. In John 10 verse 10. We are not concluded to studies and extend our byproduct of cosmic ch chemistry. We are not just something. We are someone. You are important. You are not a nobody. You are someone created in the image of God. So you are so special. You are so special when I look at you. Our lives are in God's hands. Paul said, whatever we live, whether we die, we belong to the Lord. John Wesley put it this way on his deathbed. The best of all is that God is with us. The best of all is God is with us. When all these things are happening in the world, when we are experiencing the tumor that is going on, we should know that the best of all, God is with us. He is in control. He is in charge. Christ is Lord of eternity. Look, he is coming with the clouds and everyone will receive him. We will see him in Revelation 1 verse 7. Pessimists say, look out. Optimists say, look around. Psychologists say, look within. John says, look up. <laughs> look up all the way until you catch a glimpse of Christ in charge of eternity. So he's in control. Look up. Look up. Christ is in control. Today I want to be reminded that he is the king of kings. He is the laws of laws. Today I need to know that of his kingdom there shall be no end. Today I need to be assured that he shall reign forever and ever. Forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen to that church. Is he the king of your life? He wants to be. He wants to be the king of your life. Amen to that. May God bless you this morning. As you continue to hear, taking Christ to be the king of your life. He is the king of kings. No other person should take his place. Give him the seat in your life, in your home. Let him take the, the, the biggest seat. Let God be God in your own home. Let Christ be Christ in your own life. Taking the seat. God bless you from now and evermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. King of love, you came among us as a mighty ruler, but as a child. We pray for the children in our midst that would cherish them, listen to them, and protect them. That would bring their concerns to the heart of our worship. We remember all lead ministry among children and young people and ask for courage and kindness and wisdom. As they help children and young people to flourish in faith, we give thanks for all who work in safeguarding and ask that we would be more aware of the signs of abuse and work to make our church communities places of safety and sanctuary. We long for your kingdom where the weak are defended. You call us to follow. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, I would urge you just to pray right now before you put your offering. Just think about it. Is Christ king of your life? Is he king of everything that he owns? Does he own anything that you have? Is he the giver of everything that you have? If Christ has given you all these things, then in response you need to thank him. So it is time to give your thanksgiving offering right now. Your Sunday offering. Thanking Christ for what he has done. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Realizing that we have got a lot of things. When we count our blessings one by one. And we see what God has done. Thank you Lord that you continuously remind us. That all the things that we have. All come from you. Thank you Father. Thank you Lord Jesus Christ. We bring all these things into your hands. Bless us Father. Bless every one of us. 
as we bring our offering to you. Just reminding us that all these things that we have all come from you. Bless them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us receive grace. Christ our King, reign in our lives as we go from this place in our homes to our workplaces. May we carry with us the assurance of your presence and with the, the knowledge of your glory that to acknowledge that you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all, brothers and sisters. He is the king of your life. Let him be. King of kings. Yes. <laughs>